Welcome back to the Rotary channel and we are back with our next unit that is unit 3 yoga and lifestyle. Before going to the unit first I would like you to give a good news about the reduction of the syllabus. So we would see the points that have been erased by the CBSE for this year due to COVID-19. So going to the first unit planning and sports the points that are being erased are intramural and extramural meaning objectives and significance in which there is the sub point that is specific sports program it has also been erased in which, which included sports day health run run for fun run for specific cause and run for unity there are no changes in the unit 2 so moving forward to the unit 3 yoga and lifestyle back pain is been erased in which included tadasan ardhamachandrasan vakrasan shalbhasana Bhujangasana Unit 4 Physical Education and Sports for Children with Specific Needs has been erased in which Advantages of Physical Activities for Children with Specific Needs is been erased. This point is been excluded for this year. Please note this has been erased only for this year. In Unit 5th that is Children and Women in Sports the points which are excluded are special consideration female athletes traits which included osteoporosis and eating disorders unit 6 test and measurements in sports the point in which general mo motor fitness has been excluded whereas run medicine ball put for boys 3 kg and for girls 0.1 kg has been excluded. Unit 7 Physiology and Injury in Sports Physiological changes due to aging has been excluded. Whereas in Unit 8 Biomechanics and Sports Friction and Sports has been erased. Unit 10 Training in Sports Circuit Training which included introduction and its importance have been excluded from the unit. So this is all about the excluded points of the physical education class 12th. Back to our third unit yoga and lifestyle. We are going to learn regarding yoga and some of the asans. So the topics that we are going to cover in this part 1 are as asans as a preventive measures and we are going to study about the second sub point that is obesity in which we are going to study about the procedures benefits and contraindications for the asans such as vajrasana hastasana hastasana is also known as padhastasan trikonasan and ardhamachandrasan we are going to move with the first point that is meaning of asanas before going to the meaning of asana, uh, I would like you to know about the astonishing fact that a yogic tradition which is more than 5000 years old has recently been a popular way of life. Presently people consider that yoga is significant means to achieve a healthy as well as a positive lifestyle. Due to COVID-19, people are so crazy about yoga. You must all have seen this. The power of yoga lies in simplicity, flexibility and diversity. Yoga helps in improving our flexibility, lowers our stress and increases our confidence and finally contributes to a healthier lifestyle on the whole. So what yoga exactly means? I mean what is the definition of yoga? Yoga is nothing but just to sit in a comfortable position for everlasting period of time that is called asan. According to the Patanjali, asan means sthiram sukham asanam that is that position which is comfortable and steady. There are different types of asanas which include meditative asanas, relaxive asanas and corrective asanas. Regular practice of the above mentioned asanas 
significantly affect various systems organs of our body Asin can be used as a preventive measure because they provide some physiological benefits which ultimately help in avoiding various lifestyle diseases such as diabetes obesity and cardiovascular diseases moving forward the next point benefits of asanas for prevention of diseases in which the first is circulation of blood becomes normal regular practicing of asanas reduces the stroke volume as well as cardiac output increases because of cardiac muscles start working normally and more strongly and efficiently blood circulation is improved and blood pressure normalizes and stabilizes the level of blood cholesterol reduces by regular performing of asanas the lactic acid and acid phosphates are excreted from the muscle quickly and easily which reduces fatigue regular practice of asanas also strengthens the immune system by carrying out regular practice of asanas our immune system is strengthened as a result it becomes we become less prone to various communicable diseases so in the time of covid it is a great need to practice yoga so i would suggest you all to practice yoga regularly by performing asanas regularly all the organs of the digestive system of our body being to work efficiently the absorption of food becomes efficient the storage of bile in gall bladder is concreted form is enlarged appetite increases appetite increases stomach and intestines are also strengthened constipation indigestion and gas troubles are reduced so efficiency of digestive system is hence increased it also helps in the enhancing of efficiency of our excretory system regular practice of an- asanas enhances the efficiency of all the excretory organs as a result the waste products such as lactic acid acid phosphate urea uric acid sulfates etc are excreted quickly and properly which is in turn help in delaying fatigue The next point is it also increases the strengthening of muscles as shown in the figure I have purposely kept a photo of Hulk you can see the muscles so uh, jokes apart by performing asanas regularly muscles of our body become strong the efficiency of the muscle increases fat does not accumulate in the body due to which our muscles become strong so we have covered the first point of part 1 that is asanas as a preventive measures moving forward to the next point that is obesity nowadays obesity has become a very normal thing this problem is not only seen in india but it is all around found in the countries even in the united states of america one out of 3 adults and one out of 5 children and teenagers are facing the problems of ob- obesity in india we witness a similar situation majority of the people since childhood fall prey to the obesity in most of the countries of the world so what is obesity obesity is that condition of the body in which the amount of fat increases to the extreme level in the other words obesity can be defined as the condition when we are an individual whose weight 20% more than the ideal weight an adult with a bmi more than or equal to 30 
then the ideal BMI is usually considered to be obese. In case of obesity, the body weight of an individual is always more in comparison to his height. So, considering the number of health risk associated with obesity, it has been declared it as a disease. So, you all may have observed, I don't know you must have been observed or not, but uh, the obese person usually fall the prey of diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, arthritis, osteoarthritis, flat foot, respiratory problems, various veins, liver, malfunctions, etc. Factors like genetics and environmental conditions contribute to the obesity. But your lifestyle also plays a big role in the happening of obesity. Obesity does not just happen overnight. Rather, it develops gradually from the improper diet and poor lifestyle. Obesity, we are going to further discuss about the prevention and management of obesity. So, we are going to see some methods to prevent and manage obesity. In which first we are going to study about the regular exercises, sedentary lifestyle leads to obesity. You all know that uh, nowadays due to COVID-19, we are just like uh, we don't have any work and we sit idle. That two results in the obesity. So regular exercise helps in fighting obesity. We should start doing regular exercises. In addition to regular exercise, the habit of evening stroll and walk to the market instead of taking the vehicle and use the stairs instead of elevators can help a lot of people to burn their fats. Whenever people are free, they tend to watch TV, browse the internet or play computer games or nowadays they do play PUBG. So instead of doing that, uh, they should prefer doing regular exercise. Habit of cycling also reduces obesity. Avoid the next is avoid eating regular fast food. It's a trend to eat a fast food, but the people should avoid eating fast food regularly. Nowadays, people take fast food regularly. That has increased the number of obese people in the vicinity. Due to the busy lifestyle, Cooking own food is avoided and the fast food is given more preference and that has led to the increase in the number of obese people. Instead of cooking, ordering a fast food from the restaurants is much more convenient. The worst part is that the most of the fast foods are having ingredients or more energy, totally fat saturated carbohydrates and additional sugar. Hence, in lifestyle, one must have habit to avoid fast food and start cooking on their own. That is the healthy food. The next is avoid drinking too much alcohol. Uh, you all must have not been noticed but uh, alcohol contains a lot of calories. You can see the ingredients and the data that represents the calories. So do Observe the calories when you drink soft drinks. And so, heavy drinkers are often to be obese. In a lifestyle, avoid drinking which can reduce obesity. The next point is proper diet. The unhealthy food choices are example of bad lifestyle. Overeating habit leads to obesity. By eating fruits and unrefined carbohydrates, one can reduce obesity. Obesity during the childhood can lead to the obese-related health problems in the latter lifetime. Now we will go to the actual essence that uh, help in the reduction of obesity. I mean which are useful to reduce your 
obesity. So moving forward with the first asan that is Vajrasan. So we are going to first study about the procedure how to perform Vajrasana. As you can see in the figure, uh, it is a meditative asan. That is, you should kneel down on the ground with your knees, ankle and toes touching the ground. Your toes should be stretched backward. Now place your palm on both hands on the knees. The upper body should be straight at the time. The breathing should be deep, even and slow. While doing this, expand your chest forward and pull your abdominal portion inward. So, now we would study about the benefits of Vajrasana. This asana helps in improving concentration. As it is a meditative asana, uh, you would have understood that it is helpful in improving concentration. It is also helpful in curing dysentery back pain and chest diseases. The postural defects. It prevents hernia and gives relief from piles. It is the best asin for people suffering from the sacral infection. It helps in reducing hip fat. It gives relief from constipation, acidity and increases the efficiency of the digestive system. This all are the benefits of doing Vajrasana regularly. Further, we are going to study about the contraindications of Vajrasana. So what is contraindication? Contraindication means that uh, it is also called as caution that should be taken while performing this asan. So the contraindications are a person suffering from joint pain should not perform Vajrasana. The individual who has a spinal column problem should not perform Vajrasana. It's related to I mean the spinal cord, the monkey bone. They should not do Vajrasana. The individual who has some difficulties in the moment should do Vajrasana with a lot of care because uh, this all parts are very delicate and you should take uh, certain precautions while doing uh, the asans. You may feel that this asan is quite easy but you have to consider all the things while performing. This asan. The next asan is Hastasana, which is also called as Padhastasana. Hastasana is derived from the Sanskrit word Hasta, which means hands. This asana is practiced as Udva Hastasana and also known as Upward Salute or Udva means Upward. So, we are going to study about the procedure, I mean how to perform Hastasana, Padhastasana. So we would go stepwise, so we will start, we would take the position of the mountain or Tadasana by standing with the feet together and the arms raised upward. Further, we would fit eventually across the arcs and balls of the feet. Try to strengthen the legs as much as possible. Slowly raise the arms directly towards the ceiling. Along with the arm, the palms also should be above the head facing each other. Further, look upward. Further, try to touch, your, touch the knees with your forehead. Do not strain. Keep the knees straight and exhale while breathing forward. Try to contact the abdomen in the final position to expel the maximum amount of air from the lungs. This is how you perform Padhastasana. Uh, you all must have been getting the punishment of kneeling down. It is just the same way the Padhastasana is.
so we will study about the benefits of padastasana padastasana makes the body very flexible it stretches the back and legs muscles it helps to eliminate excess belly fat it improves digestion and reduces constipation it cures many stomach elements it makes the spine flexible and touches and also tones the nerves it improves blood circulation you should be thankful to your teachers while they give you punishment the contraindication of padastasan is the individual who has a back pain should avoid this asan at least they should not bend forward fully they can do as much as they can i mean uh, without harming their neck they can bend themselves only as far as possible the next asan is trikonasan so we would see how it has been performed the procedure to perform trikonasan is that first of all you have to stand with your legs up. then raise the arms sideways up to the shoulder level bend the trunk sideways and raise the right hand upward touching the ground with the left hand behind the left foot after some time do the same asan with the opposite arm in the same way you should perform this such type of asanas in both the ways or the benefits of trikonasan so what are the benefits of trikonasan it strengthens the legs it uh, strengthens knees arms and chest it helps in improving digestion and stimulate all the abdominal organs it increases mental and physical equilibrium it reduces stress anxiety back pain it helps in increasing height it helps in reducing the excess body weight you have observed uh, the trikonasan also reduce the side fat it enhances blood circulation it also is helpful in reducing excess fat around the waist moving forward to the contraindications of trikonasan if you are suffering from diarrhea lower high blood pressure back injury or migraine avoid doing trikonasan the individual having cervical spondylosis should not perform this asan so please do or take the precautions or should while suggesting the your family members you should keep into the notice this contraindications the last asan is ardha machandrasan as you can see all the photos are from our school the students from our school are performing the asanas so ardha machandrasan so how to perform ardha machandrasan the left heel is kept under the right thigh and the right leg is crossed over the left thigh after that hold the right toe with your left hand and turn your head and back to the right side in this position move the trunk sideways then perform the same asan river in the reverse position so your both side fats get reduced so moving forward to the benefits of ardha machandrasan it's it keeps gall bladder and the prostate gland healthy it enhances the stretchability of back muscles it alleviates digestive elements it regulates the secretion of adrenaline and bile and thus is recommended in yogic management of diabetes it is also helpful in treating sinus bronchitis constipation menstrual disorder urinary tract disorders and cervical spondylitis so now about the contraindications of ardha machandrasan women who are two or three months pregnant should avoid this asan the individuals who suffer from the peptic ulcer hernia hypothyroidism shall perform the asanas only under the expert's guidance 
the individual who have the problems of a uh, slept disc may benefit from this asan but they need to take a great care while doing this asan so this was all about the part 1 so coming back we would be studying about the diabetes asthma and hypertension in the next part so till then take care and regularly practice asanas so your immune system can fight towards covid-19 thank you